<laughs> All right, well, welcome, whoever it is. This message is under the banner of non-duality, but it's really uh, a negation of duality. So that's basically what it is. Non-duality is not two, and this is the movement of not two. Not just the idea of not two, but the movement of not two. And that's the movement of interest and attention from what you're not to what you are. Yeah. Now, what you're not can't pull off that move. But what you are can be like an incredible gravitational field. Once you're freed from the bondage of self, in a sense, you may be inexorably pulled into the, the gravity of I am. Yeah. So this is really negating an activity that seems to demand a lot of interest and attention to feed itself and having that interest and attention freed from it, not by it, but freed from it. And then there's a recognition of what you're not from what you are. And in that recognition, a lot is told, a lot is revealed. And one of them is uh, you were looking from a manufactured point, yeah? You were looking from that which can be seen, yeah? And what you are can't be seen, yeah? But you were looking, that which you are was looking from a point of what you're not. So dominoes start to fall, and then after dominoes fall, you see like a geometric logic with the dominoes falling, and then there's sort of... Uh, the inside joke and you're the butt of it. And then there's rude awakenings. And then there's a complete collapse of that self-renewing balloon of seeking. The air gets drawn out of that balloon and you're affected by where it goes. Yeah. And now to me, what they call abidance really is uh, the recognition of undirected interest and attention. So instead of having it going hither and thither and into what's not happening in the past cycles and the future cycles, it basically, you have enough, very, very, it's like driving this electric car now. It has, you see the battery and then it tells you the range you have. So like 103 miles is as far as you can go. And then it drops quickly like to 74, yeah? So there's, so there's a range. This is, I don't know where I was going with that, but this, this is, uh, there's this seeing of what you're not. Oh yeah, and the dominoes. And then there's a sort of geometric logic to it. And then the idea of negation is the seamless way of arriving to where you already are. Yeah. Negation is the perfect way to seemingly arrive to where you already are, because it's seemingly. You believe you're somewhere else. You do. You don't, but something believes you're somewhere else. And we've gone along with that without knowing it, really, basically. It was the only pointing in town, basically, and four fingers were really pointing at us when it was pointing at everyone else. So every time it sees something, another thing, a separate, long-lasting, independent, it's reinforcing you with the four other fingers pointing to you as an independent, long-lasting, independent, separate ending. Yeah, not knowing that. So your living is reinforcing the interpretation of the living. It claims the living and it fortifies the interpretation. Now the interpretation is of living, but doesn't like a recognition of living because it fears, and I believe it's true in this, that if there's a recognition of the living, the interpretation may be uh, underappreciated to it. It's vast, vast demand of interest and attention. You'll lose interest in it, yeah? So just like I lose interest in a conversation that I'm interested in with the hopes of hearing someone who I'm interested in saying that they may be interested in me, when I find out they're talking about someone else, there's a loss of interest in it. I don't have to send a Navy SEAL 6 team to retrieve it. It's not stuck there. It's almost as if, you know, it's like those things that are on a rope and you just go like this, it comes right back. 
What happens with the head and the cherishing of self, it stays lingering, yeah? And it doesn't, it keeps not finding what it's looking for, but it just keeps looking, yeah? That it's very difficult. It's, it's not that thing of going out and coming back has been thwarted in a way. You go out and then there's a rotation around something, yeah? And so now that thing that should go like this, yeah? You go there, hey, this ain't interesting. You go here, now it ain't interesting, but there's gotta be some interest. And then at the point you realize the interest isn't about that. It's about the thing, this thing. So really while you constantly keep looking and it makes no sense, why the hell am I doing this? It makes a huge amount of sense because it's reinforcing the self loop, yeah? It's reinforcing the interest and attention and it's busy digging a groove so that the interest and attention gets into that mental groove. And therefore, it just, that's the way it flows. It's not like a natural flow of water, the interest and attention. It's more like a canal system. So the head is directing the interest and attention. And really, you're going to like dry up holes, really. But it's flourishing. The emptiness of this is taking itself to be the full presence of your whole life. This is my life. These are my thoughts. These are my feelings. That doesn't come. That has to be reinforced because you can walk into a, you know, you go into recovery and you sit there at an AA meeting and there's a lot of people you don't know and you don't want to know most of them because the gauge of wanting to know people at that point is would I get high with them? And they all fail. I don't want to get high with anyone in this room. So you pretty much shut off and you're in a, sense of terminal uniqueness really a big thick shell and you truly believe that the thoughts are yours and they're about you that the feelings are yours and no one has these feelings and things you did no one else has done so the thoughts are yours no one thinks like you no one feels like you no one does the shit that you've done and you're sitting there with this cocoon of terminal uniqueness and you're listening, hopefully. And in the listening, you're brought to two conclusions which the head will never lead you to. It will not lead you there. But what's happening as over, you know, the living has set you up into a situation where you're in a recovery meeting, yeah? And therefore life is overriding the, uh, the uh, interpretation, hallelujah. And life is telling you, how did these people get my thoughts? Yeah. Or they're not my thoughts. And then cling, that's one of the dominoes falling. And it doesn't fall like you did something and you ran like a ram into it and knocked it down. It falls on its own just by seeing. You see something it goes, ding, what? Yeah. And then it hit, naturally hits something else. Ding. They don't all have to go this way. Ding, ding. And some even go the way you would never think. They, they fall this way when they get hit, yeah? But there's a seamless logic in it. And that seamless logic is negation. Negation, yeah? You don't arrive there. You cut out, you see and tell the truth about that incessant drive to arrive there, yeah? And then when, you, when it still keeps happening and you do arrive there, this, this, Where you arrive to tells you on having never left. Yeah. Now, maybe the, you have enough momentum going into those mental grooves to combat 15 or 20 demonstrations of a long journey. Finally, you reach the goal. And when you reach the goal, the goal tells you on having never left. You've always been the goal. It's going to wear it out. Yeah. Maybe you take one time, maybe 30 times. It doesn't matter. It's like Ramana Maharshi, the great master said, at this point, your head is in the tiger's mouth. You've heard the message. You, there was a hearing of the message, and now it's alive in you. Even though your head's trying to deaden it at every point, it's still alive. That it's, you hit a point where that can't be put out. Yeah. So it's a done deal. And it's just best that you fucking surrender to it. Because, you know, arguing with reality is you're going to lose, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So, so to me, it's, it's a movement. Non-duality is not about anything other than appearances taken to be real. Yeah. And then starting 
and then having and then wanting to appear thousands of this this in thousands of different ways in the uh in the reality but see the reality is appearance you constantly trying to change your appearance yeah to fit reality your reality is I'm ugly or this or that, I'll never be loved. So it's constantly, you're trying to make yourself better or change or somehow, yeah? But you're, all you can reach is a level of appearance. The reality is you're already okay, not in the way you think okay is. It's not a meritocracy. It's not an earning. It's not something that you can get credit, but really, really get a big debit if you do something stupid. No, inherently, you're free of all this shit. Yeah. And what do you witness? I mean, obviously, what happens every night when you go to sleep? You know, can you imagine if you thought you were the most important thing in the world, and yet you're absent of it, like one third of the day, you're out cold? <laughs> you know, yet you got your pulse on everything. Give me a break. The best time of your life is when you're out of your unconscious. That's when you feel the greatest when you're in the water when they're, you're not in the water, yeah? Catching of a wave is different than I caught a big wave. Catching the big wave is much more immediate. And of course, you learn the fleet, it's fleeting, yeah? But in a way that's joyous because what's actually the basis of the experience is not fleeting, yeah? It's not fleeting, that awareness is here. And after a while, experiencing tons of shit, you may come up with a flavor for that which can't be experienced, seriously. And then you're in the world of experience, but you're not beholden or enslaved to that world. Yeah, my condition today is not based on my experience. It's based on a fact underlying it. And I have a knowledge of that fact. Yeah, it's sort of seeped through the system. And the knowledge of that fact here is, I don't know. That's basically how the knowledge of the fact of what I am hits this. Basically, it overrides the system. The system can't fucking figure out, I don't know, you know, which is the highest form of mind in Zen. Don't know, yeah, yeah, don't know. Don't know sucks if you wanna know, but it's great if you realize you can't know. Yeah, so you can't get the message, you can't know it, you can't experience it. No one's having an, a non-duality experience unless you call coming to this church, because that's the experience. The non-duality experience is duality. That's the experience of non-duality. The non-duality allows the experience of duality to appear. Yeah, but you're not experiencing non-duality and duality. You're the beingness that's holding the whole space for all the experiences, yeah? So what happens is, okay, you're seeking and you're using your nose like a fucking dog, but you, you can't pick up the scent of nothing, yeah? You're using the eye like an ego, but you can't see nothing, yeah? You're using like the grip of a fucking, the hippo's jaw power, but you can't bite into this, yeah? So all of that which we're relying on to navigate here can't be applied to the here, really. The here, not what's appearing in here, but the here. And you come to learn when these things are dangling and not being fed with false nutrition, which is only reinforcing the separation of the self, yeah? It's starved and then you can see it. You can see the mechanicalness of it. And then there'll be a hit, these are not my devices. Yeah. Something is using it, but I'm not. Yeah. It's beautiful because non duality won't give you anything. It won't give you anything in the beginning. It won't give you anything to the end because there's no beginning or end. There's nothing new in non duality. And I don't care how many times you affix it to something like they did with the word Zen. You know, there's Zen baths, you know, soaps. There's Zen shampoos, there's Zen courtyards, there's <laughs> go on a Zen vacation, you know? It's just amazing, you know? There's non-dual psychiatrists. Uh, 
yeah, it's hard. You'd have to package nothing with something to sell it in the, you know, in the commerce of this place. Nothing isn't that valuable. So you slack something on. <laughs> All right. Uh, integration, non-duality, integrating into your normal dualistic life. No. <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> Let's take five minutes and feel the presence, not knowing the head now has confirmed, confirmed with your cutting out five minutes to feel the presence that the other 55 minutes in an hour, you're not feeling the presence. So your desire to feel the presence is used to reinforce the impossibility that you're not the presence. So it's better not to fucking take five minutes out. Why not the 24 hours? Why not realize you are it? So it's not about turning it on or off. The underlying knowing is as if you go to work and you know you have a house. Leaving the house doesn't make you forget that you have a house. It doesn't matter if you stay overtime at work, more time isn't gonna convince you that you don't have a house. There's a knowing you have a house. Way beyond that example is the I am. Paul has felt thousands of different ways, but what it's been laying on top of is always that. The I am is the most reliable thing in this world because it is no thing. Yeah. So there's a knowing there. I'm not saying a, a, getting it, achieving it, understanding. No, I'm talking about knowing something where like when I went to Turkey that time in that rug emporium, I knew I did not have a house and therefore I had no flaws, F-L-O-O-R's. And there was no way I was going to buy an oriental rug and put it in a backpack for my next leg of the journey, which was Thailand. There's no fucking way. It could have gone on, you know, it's kept me there for three months. No, I'm just filled with Turkish coffee and fucking apple juice. No, they they would have discounted it to like 85 percent. You're going to save a lot of money. No, you know, it didn't matter. Why? Because of course, it, the ping pong game wasn't here. The ping pong game was going on, but the, the game had been called already. Six love, let's say. Yes, it was just there. And it's here now. This is the point of being convinced. You're not convinced here. You're convinced in the knowing. Yeah. And it doesn't say you became convinced. It's a state being convinced. If the misunderstandings that are causing this seeming place to be real are questioned through the understanding of non-duality, yeah, it will bring those misunderstandings into stark contrast and then all that static that you think you're going to have to dive through to get to where you want to be, you see you, you're not that static, you're there. So it's being convinced, which means it's a, it's a promoted activity by the thing itself. It's not like I wasn't, I wasn't, and then I became convinced. It's not, it's not a past tense thing. It's being Every second, there's a being convinced. You're not being convinced every second because you believe you can be unconvinced. This is not about you, the you you're not. It's not a dualistic, all right, I got a chant every half hour because I'm definitely going to forget it. You don't forget this. You don't remember it. It's a knowing, yeah? All you got to do is really lose interest. And if that interest and attention leaves all the surface shit, not even shit, all the gala, all the parades, great, good, bad, whatever. And it drops back. Where does it go? Like Ramana said, if you follow anything, it always goes back to the source. Yeah, that's the source is I am. So you lose interest in this shit. It's just, it, you don't have to go whip it to go to I am. That's its fallback. It goes there. And then that thing that was being obsessed with self is called abidance in this presence. It's the same interest and attention. It's just resting somewhere where before it was just being whipped into seeing more, getting more, doing whatever, yeah? Now I have enough, like when I was a house painter, there used to, used to be this uh, 
data about uh, studying brains in Australia. And they said, you know, a, a person has like 90,000 thoughts a day or something like that. 90,000 thoughts a day. They're not having them. They're, you know what I mean? They're being noticed. Okay. So now here, I'm a house painter. I go to work. I was, I was very rarely surprised. Usually there would be a ceiling, some trim, walls, four walls, usually. I wasn't doing many yurts or shit. Four walls, door, this and that, yeah. Paint, yeah, how many, two gallons for the room. Brush, I remembered it, yeah. Some sandpaper, yeah. Tops, okay, okay. Stop, get a blueberry muffin. All right, I had a couple of thoughts about that. Where am I gonna go eat lunch? All right, maybe 15 thoughts, probably not. I'm, that, I'm up to like 30 now. Okay, get off of work. Wow, I have eight hours to go through 99,887 more thoughts. No, all that interest, the thoughts are there to catch interest and attention. And what causes them to catch the interest attention is because they're held as your thoughts. You're not following most other people's thoughts, but you'll follow these things that are called yours religiously. And that is almost as if they're sponges and then they suck the interest and attention, even when you don't want to. Sometimes you've thought, seemingly the head has thought about the same thing 30 times in the same day. And it's got, and you ended up in a dead end and you still go down it, yes? Because there's a purpose to it that you're not privy to, which is it's sucking the light. It's taking the interest and attention, spending it fucking, fuck, you know, buying the same shit, seeing it in a thrift store and then buying again. You know what I mean? <laughs> on and on and on. So maybe I need a hundred thoughts to make it through a day. Freed. Yeah. Interest and attention can just, I got it. That's like one eighth of the battery life maybe one twentieth of an eighth yeah, to deal with a day like today. What's the big mountain to climb today? Coffee. Should I get a large or a medium? Oh, it's done. How many thoughts are that? So here what happens is, so what are these thoughts doing? Obviously, they're reinforcing something. Yeah, because would my have an impact if there was only one thought to claim? Or does it have a much bigger impact when 70,000 thoughts have been claimed as yours? Would a doer produce, would a doing produce so much guilt and shame that you'd be worrying about it for 50 years? Or is it because if you feel like a historical doer and you've done similar shit and you should never, yes, on and on. You see it? This thing that doesn't exist lengthens its appearance through interest and attention. It's being given life. We're, we're like resuscitating something that's dead. Yes? And this, and to me, the key, if you can see it as foreign, the interest and attention, here's the call, you know? The homeward call, and then it moves. You don't move it because that's, again, obsession with you. There's a moving of it, and you observe it. You've lost interest in self, like we say in recovery, and you gained interest in living. And you, you're starting to see what you can contribute to it instead of what you can get to, from it. And it's seen in AA quite a lot. Most of the time you're going in, I'm stopping going to meetings. I'm not getting anything. But what are you giving? Maybe just by you being there, someone's going to see you and it's going to affect them. How do you know you're being used by this life? Yeah. And isn't that one of the highest callings as an action figure to have purpose and to be put to use? And what greater use can you be put to by but by the higher power? Yeah. So now the interest and intentions here, and that's the abiding in truth or the abiding in whatever. And it's a habit, it becomes a habit. So when those things that would like the, all the dogs of interest attention would start barking and just running out, they're like older now. They don't fucking go. They're just laying around like their tummy rubbed and they're just sitting, being awake. Yeah? You're on, aren't you? You're just luxuriating in the onness that you are. It's just on. Just boom. Like last night, I didn't sleep almost at all. Fucking very cool. It was super quiet could hear everything, every once in a while the chime would go off and I like it, yeah.
the thoughts aren't, you know, scamping with big fucking army boots. Uh, could you barely hear them? Like little mouse feet. I mean, <laughs> there's no cheese up there. Just running around, just sitting there. Uh, I can hear Amelia's breathing and just, ah, nice. Very cool. Yeah. Nowhere. I didn't have to change channels. It was just like, you know, it was like, when are they going to cancel Seinfeld? It wasn't like that. It's just on, on, and uh, just feels, it's like warming your hands near a fire. You know, it just feels fucking good. Now, before, a second of that would have been unbearable when I was younger because I wanted to get back. I didn't, but this system wanted to revolve around this thing it's made up. And I really worship it, really. There's a cherishing of self. There's a cherishing of the idea of you to a point where you're coronated as me, which is unbelievable. I mean, when you look at the... the, the uh, inbreeding in fucking royalty, you know, with certain houses and English, we're having a lot of inbreeding with I, me, my. <laughs> wow. I mean, seriously, you start looking really fucking strange. <laughs> I mean, seriously. <laughs> same old thoughts about the same. It's just unbelievable, really. <laughs> so, this message is beautiful because, because of the effects I've witnessed, actually, in others and myself. This Zoom has been a gift. I didn't even know how much it would give me by seeing how people's facial structure has changed that come here. It just blows my mind. Yeah, the power. It can even go through Zoom and shit. Yeah, it is. And... I'll tell you the value of a last answer about some very important topics. Uh, you don't know how much value there is when that's put to rest. Yeah. Never to be revisited. Never to, oh, I better think this. No, no, better, no thinking. No, it just is. The door's been closed. You are what you're looking for. Yeah. And therefore, you don't spend a second looking for what can't be found. You don't. Yeah. Except keys and shit, you know, coffee, but I don't mean my authentic self. My authentic self is as bogus as the fraudulent self. <laughs> That's what's going to happen when the fraudulent self meets the authentic self. They're going to look very similar. <laughs> you mean the authentic self is a fraud? Exactly. Yes. What? Who knew? <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I like that hat configuration, John. What is with it? Do you think you're getting, keeping you from the sun then? You're fighting two elements, sort of like the spring and the winter at the same time. It's hard, hard to do that. All right, so anybody have a question? I know no one has a question here. All right, anyone have a question, Mike? Uh, no hands right now. Anybody want to raise their hand? Do you really want to raise your hand? <laughs> no, I'm joking. That's right. Those were the days. I know. We don't have any new people today. No. Mm. We got to put out those flyers. <laughs> Come see what's new in non-duality. <laughs> Blank paper. <laughs> ah, there's nothing new. Don't come. Fuck it. It's the same message. It's been the same message. We haven't switched from any other fish. Just cod. John, John put his hand up. All right, John. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Mike. I... um keep hearing uh, uh, elements of TiVo in mm -hmm. things that you're saying. I, I heard it th again this morning. This is uh, one of the quotes from TiVo out of the back of this book called uh, Alcoholics Anonymous Comes of Age. 
Um, oh yeah, the psychiatrist or whatever, Tebow. Yeah, Harry. Yeah. I think yeah. And uh, he's describing the personality of the alcoholic. He says, characteristic of the so-called typical alcoholic is a narcissistic egocentric core dominated by feelings of omnipotence, intent, intent on maintaining at all costs its inner integrity. While these characteristics are found in other maladjustments, they appear in relatively pure culture in alcoholic after alcoholic. In a careful study of a series of cases, Selman recently reported that he felt he could discern the outlines of a common character structure among problem drinkers, and that the best terms he could find for the group of qualities noted was defiant individuality and grandiosity. In my opinion, those were accurately. <laughs> You're setting I, off past trauma. <laughs> Go ahead, sorry. Sorry if I disturbed you. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah. Inwardly, the alcoholic brooks no control from man or God. He, the alcoholic, is and must be master of his destiny. He will fight to the end to preserve that position. Okay, can I jump in here a second, John? Oh. Now, all of that is incredibly valuable. I'm going to add something, and it's not you. Yeah, so you own it. And then there's a disowning of it because why you may have to go the, through the process of owning it because you've been denying it or the system has been denying it. It needs its day of reckoning. So finally, this is what happened with me in recovery. I thought I was conveniently avoiding shit for years that I didn't want to deal with. And I felt when I got sober, something just they kept following me and this shit that I had been able to outrun caught up with me. And then for some reason or another, the condition was new and I let it land because, and when I let it land, I had that feeling of how real it felt. And then I saw it wasn't me. And then it told me the shit had been unreal all along. I was so busy trying to make it unreal. It was as real as real can be. So when that was given up and I let all that shit, I wanted to be unreal that I thought was super real, gave it permission in a way, let it land. And, it, and then it had its five seconds of being real. And then I'm not that. Yes. So this is the point. Because what will happen with this knowledge, self will claim this knowledge or the head. And now the self-knowledge about this condition will be held as completely your authentic condition. And that self-knowledge is going to avail you nothing. Because you're not going to be free as the alcoholic. You're going to be free from the alcoholism. Yeah, it's very important. Very, I feel, well, it moves me to come to these meetings a lot that make clear that a very thick line of distinction. When you're just like when you ever hear of the Enneagram? Yes. Sufism. So Sufism, you know, there's astrology where they give you there's 12 signs and, it, you know, like an uh, Aquarius has certain signs, uh, characteristics, aloofness and something like that. Other things, Gemini, sort of really wacko and out to lunch. No, no, she's, but these things. And so, and people can find some kind of, hey, I, you know, I fit in with my, when I was born. Well, the Sufis made this thing up. I think there's nine and then there's two aspects. So there's 27 characteristics of everybody here. And they called it the Enneagram. And then you would learn about this and then you would get a number like a six. You're like a six with a four sexual, you know. And then everyone at the break is now, I'm a six, I'm a six, I'm a nine. I'm just another fucking thing to identify with. The point of learning about it is you're not a six, you're not a nine. 
Exactly. So this is the point of non-duality. This is the negation, the direction of non-duality. It isn't to culminate with all this knowledge. And I, all of this is me and you're not. So yes. So yes, get all the knowledge you want and have the disclaimer finally, instead of getting coerced back into owning it, because you want to avoid it at all costs. You don't want to know. If you if you know something that's going to reinforce the impossibility of ever getting out, you don't want to know it anymore. It's ruining your Saturday. You can have, oh, I'm seeking for the truth. It's cognitive dissonance. There's a huge drawing back that has no interest in where you, this little bit of you thinks you want to go. There, it has, there's a great statement in Ramana where he talks about the... Uh, you know, the dreaming and, and wanting to reality, wanting to attain reality. What happens? Okay, sooner or later, you're realizing the obstacle is you. You do. And then the, and the way with this, not seeing the mental logic, but thinking about it with the mental logic, the only thing you can come up with is, I have to be destroyed for reality to bloom anew. Yeah. Do you think the system's gonna wanna go that way? You're going to have so much drag. You could be getting 120 miles per hour. You're going 60. <laughs> Something does not want to go. A lot of your currents do not want to go because in its logic, for reality to appear, I have to be seen as disappeared. And that's death to the system. A death that there was nothing to die, but it lives in more fear. When you feel mortal terror, it's an add-on about what the head feels about the terror of not existing. It's depending so much on you not getting it. Yeah. It doesn't mind. It'll sign up for lifetimes of seeking. It feels safe there. It can hide there. It's got control there, like he was talking, the narcissist. But when non-duality confronts you, yeah, and demand it, a huge demand just leaks all over this and it's demanded by nothing. It's just like, you know what I mean? You know, when you sometimes you see someone and you just start to confess, they don't even say anything. They're just, oh, or I would happen with me. I'd be in, you know, I was in AA for a while. I'm sitting down at a place in the mission, having breakfast outside. A guy who had been in AA but wasn't saw me about two blocks away and starts telling me, I'm only going to the dentist as he was walking to the drug dealer. I just fucking wasn't asking him anything. He just saw me as a symbol of being sober. He's like, I had a whole story. I didn't say shit. There was no, I didn't, no interrogation at all. He was ready to confess. This is what happens. Yeah. The confession is I'm not that. This is the difference of all, everything else brings you somewhere as that. This brings you nowhere as not that. It's a different message. It's not similar to other things. It isn't. This is not Buddhism. It isn't. It may find itself in Buddhism because it's everywhere. In all of the spirituality in this world, non-duality is there, but it's not any of them. Yeah, it's not any of them. So this is all right. Yeah. Self-knowledge avails you nothing. Knowledge of self will bring you to the point I'm not that. That's incredibly fucking valuable. Instead of what you're not saying, I am that. And we know that hasn't worked. How many people are sitting today somewhere? I am that. I am that. They're chanting as what they're not. They're not doing it. That's the system. The system is loving it. Oh, yeah, go ahead. You're not me. You're not me. <laughs> it's just getting big and flourishing. This is different. Yes. Negation. Negation. Okay. You can finally tell the truth about the shit because it's not you doing it. It's not you. How are you going to do a fearless inventory on you as you? <laughs> it's it's going to be giving you softball questions. Did you? I know you didn't mean doing that. Well, I know I didn't really. Okay. Oh, you can go. No, it's not like that. It's a negation. Yeah. 
get all the evidence and they've got you lock, stock and barrel. It's no turning around, you're it. And then let it, and then I'm not. Because you've been living in the fear of it being you, finally fucking let it be you. Really, not fighting it, trying to change it, you know, trying to uh, discipline it, nothing. Let it just free range where, and the, it's going gonna, it's gonna to shit on all the, for, you know, just see it. Let it be. Let, okay, you want to be me? Land. And you'll see it's not. Instead of trying to put it off for 40 years. I saw this in recovery. I was living ass backwards. Yeah. I believed I was a fraud. I didn't want to be a fraud. And therefore, I felt like one all the time. I stopped feeling like a fraud when I admitted I was a fraud. Yeah, everyone's fraudulent. Every opinion is fraudulent and every opinion is right for the one who has it. But an opinion is fraudulent. It's all misperceived. What? Yeah. Let it land. Let it land. It's not going to kill you. See, this is the, the, the advertising. It's going to kill you. It ain't because it may kill it in its view. You can't kill something that's not there, but it's really talking as you, but about it. It will kill it. And it's saying it's going to kill you. Yeah. This is where there's that mistaken identity. We're taking that which it may kill as us. Therefore, we don't want to see it. I yeah. Learn all these friggin tricks. Hmm? The only way I saw it was, uh, and I don't recommend this, I must have gone on like 75, 10 day cocaine retreats. So. I have to, I believe in retreats. You may not be able to live through them, but if you stay up 10 to seven to 10 days on extreme uh, fucking <laughs> drugs, you're gonna have so many self, uh, you're gonna be the frog that's gonna be opened up. Your head is gonna have a field day. And if you don't die, you will have seen the beast from head to toe. You will, yeah. Because you're not having fun. The whole thing is different. You're, the worst payoff cost ratio is cocaine use. It dwindles as it goes longer, where all you're getting is that one rush and then fucking waves of fucking mental maelstroms. <laughs> you know? Yet you're driven to do it because something there is having a field day. Yes? So... That's how I saw a lot of shit. Now, there was no knowledge out of it until I got sober, and until I heard this message, then all that dead files was put to great use because I had seen the fucking culprit, so to speak, already. I could recognize it. I could tell you what it looks like, and maybe you'll see it, yeah? And stop calling it us. That's all. It may be a part of us, seeming like some people say, but it believes it's all of us. That's got to be corrected. It is. I swear to God. If you want to come by it and uh, be amigo with it, it's not. It's like a snake, more like that. Yeah. It's desire to be all. It doesn't want to be a part of you. It wants to be all of you. Yeah. At the expense. Yes. So it's a simple message. I speak it because it brought me relief and to a level where I found the real relief is from the need to get relief. Because needing to get relief becomes a fucking slavery and, a, and an, an, another addiction. And you're just constantly being moved by mostly mental anxiety. Yeah, you're constantly being moved. Even the most beautiful vistas, it won't let you fucking enjoy it long. It's that we got to get to the next rest area. <laughs> Why? You know, I have it mapped out. We got to see eight places in Sicily today. No, fuck, let's just see one. Yeah, it just goes on and on. Yes, it does. So this was put, this shit, this message is the only message that put an end to the d desire and drive for messages concerning this topic. I know it's much better for me to be dumb about a lot of these spiritual topics. I do. Yeah. An innocence of a kid is better than a fucking a professor. So, yeah.
All right. Thank you, John. I'm sorry I went off, but it was that idea is a perfect description of what we're not in the category of alcoholic as what you're not. Under all of it is always under the bigger banner, what you're not. Yes. No matter how flamboyantly intimate it feels, you're not that. No matter how distant, I can't understand it, you're not that. Yeah. Simple. When did you have that? When you would say you're not that, it would be mental denial. It was not negation. Mental denial is denying a real feeling of being it by saying what you're not. That doesn't work. And people go through that when they hear non-duality, usually in the beginning. The head tries to use it to, to deny its responsibility for things it really believed it did. And so it uses it in a weird way and it's tinny. It doesn't work. This is a negation. It's not a denial. You've just seen something that was taken to be what was so as not so. Yeah, I'm not running it down anyone's throat. Did you, anyone get a message? You must comply and be at the Zen bitch slap meeting. No, I fucking. Yeah, because I know that doesn't work. Just hear it. If the shoe fits, wear it. If the shoe fits, just wear it and then see where it takes you, yeah? Yeah. Instead of, I got, I'm got, i gonna need a hiking boot, that's not hearing the message, yeah? Maybe you don't know what's really the best thing for your foot. What? Yeah, all right, then let the person present it, please. Don't get mad about the shoe by the guy who brings the shoe. Fuck the guy who brings it, the shoe. He's going to be back in the, you know, it's going to be you in the shoe, not you and him. So here's the shoe. Put it on. See if it works for you. If it doesn't work for you, return the shoe. There's plenty of other people I'll put the shoe on. Yeah. This, oh, I have a special Cinderella for you. No, it's not nothing like that. And you can come back at any time. Try the same pair of shoe on. I don't care. Just put it on. And if it fits, they'll wear it. Yeah. So if you hear something like, why did they say you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha? Yeah. It sounds like a weird statement, doesn't it? Because especially if you're in the, in, in the act of using Buddhism to become more like the Buddha. Yeah. So can't, you don't want to feel like, hey, wait a minute. And my being in Buddhism could be construed as the Buddha using the Buddha to seek the Buddha. Well, I don't know. Let's see if the shoe fits. We're not saying it's true or not. Just put it on. If it fits, it's going to lead you somewhere else. Maybe that the great Zen master Hoang Po, whatever can be perceived, can't be perceiving. What? And then you, as soon as you hear that, it's a complete negation of the whole theme of the shit you've been listening to for years. Year after year after year, all you've been hearing about is tons of riffings on the basic assumption that what can be perceived is what's perceiving. He's just cut the tree. Didn't even need to cut the tree. Just the tree is appearance, yes? So these things, all right, what happens then? Maybe you go hear somebody speak it. Wow, I didn't understand the word this guy said, but I feel better about it. And uh got a coffee out of it yeah not bad and i had a you know i was a lonely guy that day and now i've had my day i can look forward to another saturday far out it's working some level doesn't matter yeah message burrows in a knowing starts to have that unsuspected inner resource starts becoming suspected and you know the tree by its fruit things that you only know how heavy duty the head was no one else does and you can know when it gets, when it backs off, like no one else can. Yeah. I've seen a lot of people on the surface, everyone's not paying much attention anyway. You know, when you say hello, you really don't want to have a long meeting. Okay. Hello, by you know, this, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you really don't most of the time. You're too busy. I mean, mine, let's say. So, <laughs> I only use you to get a ping of I me my. You I me a lot. Ding ding ding. Yeah. No. So whatever. Anyone have a question, Mike? Uh, no hands up.
We're not oh, guaranteeing yeah. if you come to a live meeting, you're going to get a coffee, but <laughs> it's a po strong possibility. Yeah. Uh, you got Tom. Do I have Tom? No, you have Tom. Tom's hand. I Hello, Paul. I, I wonder if you could talk some more about the policeman, the thief and the policeman, and and with the and the tiger and the whatever's in the tiger's mouth. If something wants to help the tiger eat, and I don't trust it, but I, it that won't it won't shut up. I mean, it still thinks there's something I need to do to help it along. You know, more 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 of well, this more it. blocks. <laughs> all, right, all right, I get it. But all right, just throw in who wants it to shut up. There's an echo that's taken the other echo as bothering the echo. Really. It's the same, same, you know, it's the same Yodala. <laughs> but I understand. The way I'm looking at the policeman thief now is on a broader level, just looking at my own life where what I can imagine. And I remember when I was young, I tried to be perfect. And I wouldn't, I didn't curse till like sixth grade. And I didn't speak in class for the first two, first and second grade. And there was a lot of mental critiquing. And I felt in hindsight, I was living under the policeman already. And I wanted out. And when I saw other kids who were acting out in school, getting more attention than the ones that were being good, I just sort of felt like I lent that way and I started to act out and I got I got a lot of what I wasn't getting as the policeman or with the policeman the thief brought me some fucking good goods you know I could uh yeah and so it went that way for quite a long while I needed to get away from the policeman I needed to act out to reach a level of being bad because it gave me a lot of permission and, and it relieved me of a lot of responsibility. So it was a nice haven for the action figure. Seeing that there was only two options, I don't want that fucking policeman, but then the thief got went extreme and I started to uh, have a lot of consequences living from the thief's point of view, let's say. And it got unbearable, you know, getting run over twice in one night. Uh, probably wouldn't have happened if the policeman was watching the street when I was crossing it. But the thief was skimming around and got whacked like usual. Yeah. So then I get sober. Oh, man. Lo and behold, the thief has now been put to rest. Jerk, the joker is in uh, Arkham Hospital, mental or mental, whatever. And then suddenly the policeman appears again. And now I have to be perfect. I got to constantly be observant, you know, it's just, it was like a surveillance state in my head. And like the, the wattage of the spotlights got to be about three times, you know, every little move had to be gone over. What does it mean? It was just way too fucking much, but I wasn't going to go back to the thief. See, and I didn't know that was the only possibility I knew before. It was just thief, policeman, thief, policeman can't go back thief, yeah? And can't bear the policeman. So what's one to do? Try to go back to Buddhism that I was introduced to. I was actually introduced to guru and stuff. I didn't want the guru, so Buddhism, yeah? And then Buddhism just refined the policeman where it was like undercover, robes and, you know, but it was infiltrating and it was perfection. Now you gotta be awake. Enlightenment. That's well, just unbelievable. It's just fucking insane. Yeah. So I got what am I gonna do? I can't go back to the thief, can't bear the policeman. I don't want to drink or use. I don't know any other way. Thank God I hear the message of non-duality. And they said, you know, that thing that seems to be imprisoning you is gonna be your salvation if you can just hold it in a different understanding. When you see it and you assume it's you and you take it to be you and you've lived it as you and you want to avoid it as being you, you're now going to see it as not you, yeah? And not only that, you're going to have some weight to it. And I'm going to tell you about denial so you can recognize when the mental state is trying to use this message of negation to deny something, yeah? So that you have the eyes to see because your eyes are before everything, bro. They are. 
You are what you're looking for. Not as the policeman or thief, neither of them. What? Yeah. So then this message hit and now I've been able to live peacefully with the thief and the policeman. They didn't have to go anywhere. They just had to be sort of neutered in a sense. Yeah, like the taser only has a little, not like a fucking life-threatening thing from the cop, you know. But it's just, it's just I can live quite well in with near vicinity of the thief and policeman with this one lovely chorus. I'm not that. Yeah, seriously. Because it was unbearable. Yeah, it was. And I see it with a lot of people. They get into spirituality and the policeman takes the garb of with the robes and everything and just fucking does them a new one. Yeah, it's just unbearable. So this this is one way I see the policeman, the thief. The way I feel Ramana presented was, again, you're going to try to have the details of the thief. And then by mistake, you send the policeman and the policeman is the cousin of the thief. Yes, they're the same, same. So it's so it's insane to send the thief, the policeman to, to catch the thief because they're in cahoots. Yeah. But I saw it as a basic theme of how of what I was listening to since I was like four or five, you know. And it seems like there was only two real stages in my life: policemen causing me to have to get relief, relief causing me, you know, extreme getting relief, causing so many situations that I had a, that was going to kill me. And then hoping that I wouldn't, the policeman wouldn't wake back up, but having a feeling it would, and it did. And then, thank God, I heard something that brought me to a, a not a relief as one from the other, because that's not relief. Yeah, it was relief from both. Hallelujah. Yes, and now that's why I'm not out trying to save the world. I go to thrift stores. I play in a very small stage where you can't get too excited about your role. I realized it to keep it simple because this head had a field day with spirituality. You know, like if I'm going to transcend as the first policeman to enter. <laughs> and why you got to do more. <laughs> it was just unbearable. Yeah, so I do, I don't do real. <laughs> Just trip me if I start leaving the house to, you know, try to save the world. Just trip me. The fall may bring me back to my senses. Yeah, I'm much better used when I'm around the corner for half an hour than thinking I'm the vanguard. I'm the tip of the spear. <laughs> it's not going to go well. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i can't you know i went to a glorious thrift store was <laughs> i got a i saved a dollar wow i'm a big i i made thousands on the stock market i made three dollars i got one thing sold it three dollars more it's nice it's like don't give it a big sandbox give it a little sandbox it looks every once in a while <laughs> keep it busy work on the truck <laughs> I do I'm totally busy now the dog play with the dog cat Amelia everyone they're saving me they're saving me from myself literally literally they're really literally saving me from the self really yeah yeah if I put the dog ahead of me I this goes a whole lot better put the cat ahead of me Put Amelia ahead of me, but they're not ahead of me. Amelia and I are on us, but yeah, it just works. And um, and it's worked for so long now that I'm sure of of where the working came from. Yes, I'm not. I don't. I'm not attributing it to something that it ain't. I'm attributing it to that sense of I am that was being used to support either the policeman or the thief because they were both called Paul both the thief and the policeman. And Paul is, a, is like a, an emblem on the car of I am. 
it has nothing to do with running of the Ford. It doesn't, it's just a little fucking thing you see while you're driving through the windshield. Oh yeah, I'm a Ford. It keeps reminding you, you know what I mean? Lincoln or something. Yeah. So yeah. Now the Ford's a Ford, Toyota's Toyota. Works better. What? A Fiat and uh, 500. So yeah, anyone else out there in there? Uh, no other hands. Oh, great. I know there's people out there, yeah. Hands. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I wasn't asking for feet. <laughs> All right. Well, let's say goodbye then, eh? Okay. And, and just to let you know that I, I've lived off, or I've been um, privileged to have some of your uh, thrift store rejects. Your uh, winter coat was just fabulous this last winter, the one that they didn't okay. take back. <laughs> yes. Great. Yes. I, I brag about that. <laughs> Oh, good. I'm happy. Yeah, I'm willing to. I'm willing for a small fee. To every one of the followers of them, they some of them need it very badly. They need an intervention when it comes to the fashion plate. But call upon me. I'd be more than happy to help you. I have a lot of free time on my hands. I would actually. It's a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's say goodbye. Eh? I guess. Hey, I had a wonderful time. I hope you didn't or you did or whatever. I've had a lovely time today. You see the idea of policeman thief in that way, though? See, the way that, see, with the identification as the action figure, it's either or, not a neither. Yeah, because you're going to have to be one. But you don't. See, this is the beauty of it. you it's a neither. It's not one or the other. It's neither. This is non-duality. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Thanks, Tom. Thanks for the question. Hope that helps. And that voice, if it gets really loud, do something. You know, put turn up the music louder or whatever. <laughs> Take a walk, help someone, look at a bird feeding. It's so easy. After a while, you're you're always in the vicinity of I am. And it's easy just to whack, you know, it's just not going to take a 30 hour psychotherapist session, you know, you just take a breath, whatever, and you'll be a new, renewed, like a new, you will. Yeah, yeah. You will be the skillful means. You will be it. Yeah, just to remember this. See, when you're remembering what you're not, you're going to need a lot of skillful needs. But if there's a sense of what you are, that's the skillful means, really. Yeah, yeah, it's the most reliable one. Can't be misplaced. It's always available at all times, right where you are. And it has no requirements to work. It'll work. Yeah. All right. All right. Nice to see you, Tom. Uh, Mike, as always. I want. I think I'll call you later. I want to know what's going on. Eh? Marty. <laughs> what? Uh, the Wi-Fi was good. The volume was good. Yeah. Looking good. Thank you. Nice to see you, Chris. Richard H., nice to see you, Richard. Uh, John from Florida, as always. Tariq in Dover, New Jersey. Nice to see you. Beth. We got Vlad, Jay, Chris. And in this moment, I'm going to... I'm going to talk about the retreat in Sicily this year in October. And uh, all the information's on the site. And I think Amelia's email is there. If you have any questions, you can ask her. I don't know if it's clear or not, but there'll be talks twice a day, every day of the retreat. Uh, and yeah, it's just going to be, I'm looking forward to it as far as I can look forward to things. That's Going to be and so if you're interested, we'd more, we'd be really happy. It'd be nice if you could talk to Amelia because the down payment needs to be by April 20th. We got to have a certain amount of people to convince them that we're going to be showing up, and then from then on, it's all downhill. Okay, all right. Back to saying goodbye. Vlad, Vlad was there last year. Not a wonderful time. I would tell you the truth. The cost of the retreat is worth it to meet Vlad. Really, actually, every one of the people that were there were really priceless. So you'd be really missing out a, on a very valuable event, missing out Vlad and Chris and 
Jesse and everyone. So we got J.A. from uh, Toronto, from Canada somewhere. Chris B. in Massachusetts. Uh, this is Mikal. How do we say the name? Can yes. you hear me? Yes. Uh, it's Michal, but what Mikhail? I hear, Michal. Yeah. No, Michal. All okay. right, we'll yeah, get, that's it. get it better. Yeah. Hey, hey, thank you. Have you been here before? I haven't been on the Zoom, but I've, I've been watching uh, for a couple months. Oh, all right. Great, great. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for making the leap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks. You got Mickey, the matriarch of Madeira. We got Mia down under. Nice to see you. Sally, she's finally succumbed to the message. She fell asleep. Oh, yeah, that's great. She is. She's out cold. We got uh, Elon. Elon, we've had Elon here before. Nice to see you. And don't worry if I, if we're saying the, your name wrong, just correct us, please. Nanette. I haven't seen the net for a little while. How are you? Where's the candle? Right oh, here. All yeah, right. I, I listen to you a lot and uh, just my scheduling, but I'm there with you in spirit. And I'm looking forward to if you come to Doylestown again. Oh yeah, I'm, uh, I'm gonna, I put out feelers, we'll see this week. All I'm right. Bit, should I stay or should I go? <laughs> Plus I don't wanna travel Very on the bad. plane. Doylestown and back east. But yeah, yeah, we'll let you know. We'll we'll put it up on the website. Great. Blessings on your head. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we got John K. Thank you, John, about the Tebow. Sherry, San Diego. Shannon Corkery. Roman. Yes, we're all gonna solidify in Sicily. Mm -hmm. yes. And yes, nice it's to see hooked. you, Anne. Kathleen. Uh, let me go back to the second page. All right, we have Vlad, Beth, Andy, Kathleen. Oh, here we go. Chris G, Chris Gilmore. He's back at the small door. Kathleen, we got you. Mike M, another Mike. Nice to see you, Mike. Jim. Lynn, Sky. Oh, Sky. If it's the Sky I'm thinking of, nice to see you. Mike C. Zoe. Nice to see you, Zoe. Tommy. I think uh, that's it. Hey, if I missed you, uh, I haven't really. And we'll see you soon. Yes? Thanks, Paul. Excellent Just, stuff. Thank man. you. Go to the I... website under the event page. All the talks will be there. Hopefully, and uh, if not, just call, just email me, and so I can know. All right, all right. Thanks, Paul. Bye, bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Mike.